Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. The poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Frisky is a cold and clover. I think I'll just pass up getting tonic this year. Stay right where you are. Now, Ellie, where's your monkey? I want to test my batch. Yeah, Ellie, get this ape away from me. Oh, Bessie's got a crush on you, Jeff Ruff. A crush? That's the craziest thing I ever heard of. Yeah, as pretty as she is, she can do a lot better than you. <laughs> you just tell her to keep her old monkey paws to herself. Quiet, I want to test my tonic. Fast, Granny. And I cut it with branch water. <laughs> I don't like the way that ape's looking at me. Well, she's in love, Jeff Rose. <laughs> Bessie, that's just Granny's tonic you're feeling. Uh, you and me would never work out. <laughs> Bessie, to start with, I'm too tall for you. <laughs> See, can you head her off out front? Yes, sir, Pop. Granny, you say you watered this down? Yeah, Jed. Well, water it again. But it's such a nice, strong batch. That'll mean I'll have a couple of gallons left over. Granny, the way it sets, this tonic is downright dangerous. <laughs> oh, Jed. Bessie, I'm losing my patience with you. <laughs> I'll water it again. <laughs> Chief, it's almost time for your luncheon date with Dr. Clyburn. Oh, that's right. Remind me to forget my wallet so he'll have to pay. Chief, you fooled that on him the last three times. It just isn't fair. All right, all right. I'll take some money. We can go Dutch Street. <laughs> just put the tonic down, Jethro, till Granny rounds up some employees. Uncle Jed, I don't care if she did have a crock full left over. I sure wouldn't have told her to pass it out here at the bank. Don't worry about it, boy. Yeah, but you seen what it done to Bessie. Well, she's acting like her and me's engaged. I know. That's the reason I switched Crocs on Granny. Huh? Well, this looks just like spring tonic. That ain't nothing but Granny's homemade root beer. Hey, good thinking. And I'm dry as a biscuit. Jethro! <laughs> Here's the first one, and there's more on the way. Now, you wait here whilst we go tell Mr. Drysdale. Come on, Jed, you bring the tonic. Jethro, I was hoping we could try some tonic together, but Granny says that there's a Bessie in your life who won't let you go for a minute. Bessie? What heck, Bob? Bessie's just a doggone mo... Oh, uh, Granny was right. Uh, as far as Bessie's concerned, we's engaged. <laughs> now, Miss Clampett, Granny, what can we do for you? Well, uh... Say, that looks a little heavy. Let Miss Hathaway carry it. Set it right here, Jim. You and your workers are in for a real treat, Mr. Drysdale. Wonderful. You've been cooking again, Granny? Oh, better than that, making medicine. This here is my spring tonic. Oh, no, Granny, you now, shouldn't have... you don't have to thank me. You folks here at the bank are our best friends in this here town. All right, Jethro, run them in! Oh, my God, Mr. Clampett, you've got to stop Granny. 
The last time I took that stuff, I ended up in the hospital. Yeah, I remember. You strained your back trying to lug your wife across the threshold. Well, there's nothing to trouble with, Mr. Clapper. I shall never forget the effect it had on me last spring. <laughs> One at a time. The rest of you wait outside. Well, I, want to I know what Granny Spring Tonic does to city folks, but you can stop worrying. All she's handing out there is root beer. Well, but that won't fool anyone. It might. You see, I'm counting on a little wishful thinking from the girls and a whole lot of pride from Granny. So, you want to be first, eh, honey? Well, I, I heard what happened to Miss Hathaway last spring, so go, go, go. <laughs> Gee, uh, nothing's happening. It ain't. <laughs> I ain't never made a bad batch of tonic. Don't you even feel a little lightheaded? Well, kind of giddy and happy like. Well, now that you mention it. Of course you do. You get them tingly all over and you feel like dancing? I guess so. <laughs> oh, I, I think I'm feeling it. Of course you are. Kick up your heels, little, little. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's better. Next. Now, hold it. I tell you I have a luncheon appointment with Mr. Drysdale. I'm Dr. Roy Clyburn. Yippee! <laughs> Hi, handsome. <laughs> Girls, wait until you taste that groovy tonic. Granny's a wizard. Granny, that little hillbilly is making medicine again? Is she ever? It's got the kick of a zombie. Funny thing, though, it tastes just like root beer. <laughs> well... Uh-huh. Dr. Kleiber. So, Granny, you're at it again. You ought to wait your turn, Roy. But seeing that you're a doctor, I'll give you professional courtesy. I've just been waiting for a chance to catch you passing out that tonic. Then you're in luck. Open wide. What? <laughs> That's all I need. Roy. Roy, let me explain. Let me explain. I have been trying to stop that little witch doctor's illegal practice of medicine ever since she came here, and I finally got a witness that can do it. Me. But, Roy, please. And let me tell you another reason I'm so happy this happened. Because at lunch today, when you forget your wallet, I won't be there to pay the check. <laughs> Just two doses. One girl and Dr. Clyburn. And Miss Jane said to come back and pass the rest out later? We wasn't thinking, Granny. Uh, it would be hard for him to tend to the banking business with all that high power tonic sloshing around inside of him. Miss <laughs> Ellie, it's the best batch I ever made. Why, Dr. Clyburn put me a flu out that office after he took it. Hey, speaking of spring tonic, oh, where's Bessie? Oh, she's out back waiting for you to come home. You mean that stuff ain't wore off yet? Take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie Mae, tell her I ain't interested. <laughs> Doggone! Don't worry, Jethro. She'll get over it. But that'll take hours. And them's my bananas! <laughs> Oh, here you are. Oh, get out of my office, Milburn. I'm through talking. Granny is going to face charges for practicing and dispensing medicine without a license. But that tonic she was passing out was root beer. Good, that's another charge. Fraud. Please, <laughs> boy, let's talk about it over lunch. My treat. Well, <laughs> there's no need to go out. I stop on the way. American cheese, I'm a bite. That is my lunch. Half of it is. Out! You can have the pickle. I have patience waiting. Granny's intentions are good. She's just a little unconventional. Unconventional? She makes Baron von Frankenstein look like Dr. Spock. <laughs> You've always said that the medical profession is badly understaffed. And she just wants to help. Well, she's going to by staying out of it. And the two of us are going to see to it that she does just that. Two of you? Myself and the judge. <laughs> oh, no. Before I let you put that sweet little old account behind bars, I'll, I'll swallow every pill in this jar. Help yourself. They're cotton balls. <laughs> oh, please, Roy. 
Let Granny come down and watch you. See what modern medicine is like, and when she does, she'll know how far behind she is and quit of her own accord. Absolutely not, Milburn. All right. You forced me to do this. What are we? Twelve stories up? Oh, this is going to make some very ugly headlines if you refuse me and they find a body lying down there. Melbourne, now wait, don't do anything foolish, don't jump. Who's talking about jumping? It's your body they're going to find. <laughs> oh, boy. Give it a chance. Let Granny come down and observe. I'm begging you. Oh, stop. If you're that desperate, I'll think about it. Thank you. Bless you. How can I ever show my gratitude, my appreciation? Say, what about taking my half of the sandwich? <laughs> Pa, guess who called Granny while she was gone? Dr. Clyburn. Uh-oh. Probably complaining about Granny dosing folks down to the bank. No, he wants her to come down to his office this afternoon and talk medicine. Well, that don't sound right. Dr. Clyburn ain't exactly hair tearing fine of Granny's doctrine or Granny. Well, she said the spring tonic she gave him a working. Well, I gotta go and get Granny's doctrine back. It sure can't be the tonic she gave. Unless he's just out of his mind about root beer. <laughs> Maybe it's like he said. He just wants to talk medicine with her. Well, if he does, Granny's dressed for it. Or is she? <laughs> Granny, what y'all got up for? Dr. Clyburn called. Wants me to come down to his office to talk medicine with him. Yeah, well, he told us, but how come the flowers and ribbons? Jeff. Yeah. Just because I'm a physician don't mean I can forget I am a woman. Well, which one are you trying to be now? Hush, uh, <laughs> Granny, here's your doctrine bag. Put in the vanilla extract like you say it. Mmm, perfume, too. It ain't perfume. It's for, for making remedies to show Dr. Clyburn. Uh, is that what this uh, roast chicken and uh, homemade pumpkin pie is for? Never mind. You and Ellie go get the truck and take me down to his office. Yes, ma'am. Ma Granny, if I didn't know better, I'd swear you had your cap set for Dr. Clyburn. Hogwash. This is nothing but a professional visit. <laughs> now stop it and tell me why you're doing this. You never gave two hoots for Dr. Clyburn before. Well, he never gave a hoot for me. But now that he's calling me up and asking me down to his office and all, well, maybe we finally got something to hoot about. He sure has done a turnaround. <laughs> That was an awful good batch of spring tonic he got a dose of. Believe me, Granny, that tonic he took has nothing to do with it. You're sweet. <laughs> Chief, well, what happened with Dr. Clyburn? Everything is settled. He's not pressing charges. Oh, are the clampers still inside? No, I got them to go home for a while, but, but how did you manage to pacify Dr. Clyburn? Miss Hathaway, I didn't pacify him. Men like that understand only one thing, raw power. Brute force. It's dog eat dog, you've got to be a tiger. Show him who's boss. You know how I handled him. You got down on your knees and begged like a baby. I bet your life I did. <laughs> See, but it worked. Now, Clyburn usually takes this afternoon off, but he's giving up a golf game just to show Granny around the office and convince her that she's no match for modern medicine. But what if he can't convince her? Then he's going to press charges. You know what that means. Somebody's going to jail. Yes. Oh, well. We'll write you every day. <laughs> I probably should have had you down here long before this. I just hope it isn't too late. Oh, it's never too late, Dr. Clyburn. We can I call you Roy? Oh, Roy will be fine. Danny, then you don't have to call me Dr. Granny. Just call me Granny. Or, uh, Daisy. Granny will be fine. You know, I kind of thought that my tonic had something to do with you asking me here today. But Jed said he didn't think so. Well, Jed was wrong. I've restrained myself for a long time, but after you tonic to me this morning, I knew I had to do something. It always was a great little icebreaker. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, what's in there? Oh, well, come on in. I'll show you. This is where I see most of my patients. Uh-huh. What's that music? Oh, it's background, for relaxing. 
Well, first let's get to know one another better, and then we can dance. <laughs> that smell. It's like vanilla. It's vanilla extract. I even got it behind my ears. Oh? Well, would you like to wash up? <laughs> Ain't you the kidder? <laughs> Well, I'm glad to see you ain't again taking a little nip now and then, Roy. Well, I wouldn't drink that stuff. Why, that'll that'll make you blind. Well, I grant you, you gotta know when you've had enough. Let's get down to business. All right. With the equipment and instruments I keep in this office, I can perform many types of minor operations. <laughs> All right, then. Let's see you start carving this chicken. And after we've eaten, we'll see about that dance. <laughs> Come on and drink some more catnip tea now. It'll work again in the tonic. Have you heard from Granny? Well, no, sir, Paul. I've been keeping Bassie company. She's still pining for Jethro. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, and the worst part is, well, he's been treating her just like... Like an animal. Yeah, well, uh, really, Bessie is an animal. And she better start forgetting about Jethro. <laughs> Sorry, Bessie. Oh, hello? Well, oh, Granny, uh, how you doing down there? You gotta pick me up here at Dr. Clyburn's office right away. He ain't made no improper advances to you, has he? He ain't even made a proper one. I thought at first my tonic wasn't working. The trouble is, he's too worried to think of romance. Worried about what? He's failing in his profession. In the two hours I've been here, he ain't had one patient. No. And all that time, he's been trying his heart out to convince me he's a good doctor. How? Well, telling me how good trained he is and how modern doctors need all this fancy equipment like he's got. And he's coming now. I gotta hang up now. <laughs> Here we are, Granny. Won't you even have a little piece of pie, Roy? No, Granny. Now, this is an electrocardiograph. Can't do a really complete physical examination without one. Oh, that's nice, Roy. I'll bet you could give a dandy examination with that. You ever had a patient? <laughs> this costs $1,300, and what you've seen is only a sample of the modern equipment that I have here. I ain't never seen so much stuff. Too bad there ain't nobody around to try it out on. <laughs> yes? Who? Oh, now, didn't you tell her that this was my afternoon? Uh, all right, have her go into room B. Yeah. I'm sorry, Granny, I didn't expect this, but I have a patient. Oh, praise be. <laughs> Don't get excited. <laughs> oh, she's very influential in society, but the worst kind of a hypochondriac. Uh, come along while I get her x-ray. Doctor. Go right in, Mr. Longpre. I'm Dr. Granny. I'm Heppin Dr. Clyburn. Good. Perhaps you can do something for me. He doesn't seem to take a proper interest in my case. And I think I know why. Before you come in, he described you as the worst kind of a hypochondria. <laughs> That's, I'm gonna help you. In my practice of medicine, it don't matter what religion you are. I beg your pardon. Now, what's your complaint? Well, it's rather general. I'm a little short of breath. I can't sleep. Stop right there. I can tell the rest by looking at you. First off, that course is too tight. What? Get rid of it. Let the blood percolate. And them shoes are too small. Try some practical ones. And them hands. How long has it been since them hands done any work around the house? I have eight servants. I don't need to work. Yes, you do. And the sooner, the better. Now, you go on. Try scrubbing the floor, washing the walls, and you'll sleep, believe me. Now, what? And don't ride. Take them shoes off and walk home. One, and cut the stays in that corset. Mrs. DeLongpre just left here in a rage. You were supposed to be with me. What did you say to her? Nothing. Just that her corset and her shoes were a little too snug. She was mad. Mad? She said she'd personally see that I lost every patient I had. 
Well, look on the bright side, Roy. You ain't got too many to lose. Granny, you'd better leave. I think I'm getting a little faint. You must be hungry. Have some chicken. And maybe you better have a piece of pie, too. <laughs> then he sort of let out a yell and smashed my pie. Well, you did lose his last patient for him. Yeah. Plus, it must be off seeing something you put so much into your whole livelihood going down the drain. He has had an awful run of bad luck lately. Yeah. And then, too, this ain't exactly the hand of a natural-born healer. Well, that's probably why I had you to come down there, to give him help. I bet you didn't care nothing about romancing you. <laughs> Who asked you? Well, anyway, uh, we gotta help Dr. Clyburn. We gotta figure out a way to get him some patients. Jethro, you thought of anything yet? Uh, it's just a matter of time, Uncle Jet. I got my giant brain and six grades worth of education working on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the meantime, I think I know a way Dr. Clyburn could get to jump on them other Beverly Hills doctors. Well, how, Paul? By doing something none of the rest of them have thought of yet. Advertise. Good idea, Jim. What is it, Roy? What was that message about coming right over? Some emergency? Granny called to have me watching television at this hour. Said she had a surprise for me. Uh-oh. That sounds bad. What is it? I don't know. I'm almost out of tranquilizer. Uh -oh. Here's Granny. All right. Is it working? Are we on? <laughs> Howdy there. This is Dr. Granny telling you there's one of the first-class physician in Beverly Hills, Dr. Roy Clyburn, the healer with a heart. <laughs> I want to show you a typical Clyburn cure. Here's a man of four seeing Dr. Roy Clyburn tired, run down, feeling poorly. <laughs> now, here's the same man after seeing Dr. Clyburn. They are restored. Full of the Dickens, a satisfied customer. <laughs> now I want you to all go down to the Beverly Crestview Medical Building and give this man your business. He's really up against it. <laughs> and here's a special offer to the first 50 folks a dose of my own spring tonic. <laughs> all right, turn it off. How's that, Sid? Great, Granny. If that don't get your poor old Roy some patience, nothing will. <laughs> I can't turn it off. It ain't, huh? Well, thanks for having us over, Roy. The only way you will leave this room is through that window. But you're on the medical board. They know you wouldn't advertise. Who cares about them? I'll never have another patient once this gets around. Roy, I'll use you. Milburn, you'll need me. <laughs> Where's Dr. Granny? Dr. Granny has retired permanently. Oh, well, I wanted to thank her. I decided to take her orders, and after I'd walked home and scrubbed some floors, I took a nap and slept like a baby. I liberated myself from top to bottom. No more girdle. And look at my new shoes. <laughs> I must be getting back to the charity bazaar. Everybody in Beverly Hills is there. Everybody? Then they didn't see the commercial. <laughs> I'm telling them all about Granny's firm approach to medicine. I hope you are going to keep up her fine work. You bet I am. <laughs> and the next time you come here, I want to see five pounds off those hips. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> It's a nice feeling to help somebody out, ain't it, family? It is. Yeah. It is. I feel so good, I'm gonna up and take Bessie for a ride. Well, she may not want to go, Jethro. She's over that spring tonic. Tonic or no? I ain't gonna be turned down by no ape. <laughs> Come on, Bessie, I'll take you for a ride. <laughs> Looks like Bessie has finally gotten over her crush on Jethro. <laughs> yeah, but now what are you going to do about him?
Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.